Let's return now to the launch of NASA's Artemis 1 rocket, which was due to blast off a few minutes ago, for what would be the first step in taking astronauts back to the moon. Now, this is the scene at the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral. However, the countdown for the launch was put on hold 40 minutes before Artemis 1's scheduled takeoff time. The U.S. Space Agency said there was an issue with one of the rocket engines. It had earlier said it was also investigating an apparent crack in some thermal protection material. Well, joining me now uh, is uh, astronaut Tim Peake, as well as from Cape Canaveral, uh, our correspondent Jonathan Amos. And um, uh, Tim, disappointing, because we were sort of expecting this to happen uh, right now, essentially. Yes, we were, but we are still within the launch window. So uh, we've got two timelines, a T minus and an L minus. So the clock has stopped at T minus 40 minutes, which means that if they decide to go ahead with the launch, that clock will start running again. Uh, but we can't go outside or beyond the two hour launch window, which takes us to 1533 British summertime. Um, because as Jonathan was explaining earlier on, that's when just the orbital dynamics of the Earth's rotation and the location of the moon doesn't line up and it won't allow the translunar injection to work correctly. Jonathan, how's it going? What, what are you hearing? Oh, I'm upset, Yana, <laughs> because they've just called it a scrub. We're not oh, going today. No. Um, uh, we've, we've, got this <laughs> we've got this engine issue, which uh, we're still waiting for an update from uh, the launch director. But if I look over to my left now, there is some horrible cloud, um, and that cloud is a, is a violation. If it moves over the pad, uh, they would not be allowed to launch the rocket, even if they sorted out the engine issues, even if they had enough time uh, on the clock. So I'm afraid we're not going today. Uh, let's see what happens. You know, maybe, maybe the engineers can get out to the pad, they can have a look at the engine, decide that it's something that they can fix uh, relatively easy. Uh, and then we can have another go. We've got another opportunity on Friday. Slight issue with that is that it goes to the afternoon uh, here in Florida. And at this time of year, Florida has very dynamic weather. It's always got dynamic weather, but at this time of the year, especially so. And if you want to launch a rocket, you really ought to try and do it in the morning when it's a bit calmer. So as we go to these later launch windows, we've got one on Friday and then we've got one on Monday as well we could rub up against difficult weather, even if, as I say, uh, we can sort out these technical issues. What I don't want to hear uh, from NASA is that they need to roll the rocket uh, back into the huge uh, vehicle assembly building here uh, on the Kennedy site to do work on it, because that would mean several weeks delay. Yeah, uh, exactly. As you were saying earlier, I mean, if that if that is the case, then then uh, we won't see a potential Friday or Monday uh, launch. And so what's happening there now behind you? Is it all sort of a, a wrap? People are getting ready to go back home, I suppose. And, and uh, NASA's doing their bit and doing their work now. Well, I, I would think uh, for starters, the, the word is spreading around the beaches uh, here because there must be huge uh, crowds uh, along the beaches. I saw uh, people setting up very early this morning at about one or two o'clock in, in the morning when I came in here uh, and they'll be getting word that it is a scrub and of course they'll be thinking I need to get on the road, uh, get back home, get back to my hotel before everybody else does. So uh, there's going to be quite a jam on the local roads uh, as everybody disappears for the day. Uh, we'll wait to hear what uh, they've got to say. Uh, I dare say the launch director and other NASA officials will come and talk to us a bit later to explain the issues that they had. And then we get a, might get a better idea of what might happen later in the week. Jonathan, thank you so much and hope to see you Friday. Right, well... Very That's disappointing, yes. but uh, it's understandable. Um, I mean, we'll hear later on, as Jonathan said there, about what the exact issue is, but it sounds like it's an engine bleed problem, um, which is absolutely vital because um, the liquid hydrogen that flows into these engines, it's cryogenic, so it's exceptionally cold and it flows around the nozzle and, and that's to warm up the fuel and also to cool down the rocket nozzle itself. Um, and you've got to get the pressure on the turbo pump correct. And so they bleed a bit of that hydrogen off in order to balance the pressure out. So if that's not working correctly, that engine will not be at full thrust 
So it's absolutely a vital part of this launch sequence. Uh, I guess, you know, we don't fully appreciate how much actually needs to fall into place. As Jonathan was saying there, it's the weather, it's the time of day, it's the time of year, it's what's happening with the rocket itself. It's not one thing. All of these things need to kind of match. And you realise, I mean, the sort of missions you did, what, what a miracle that was <laughs> that all of those things did come together. It is, yes. I mean, rocket launches are exceptionally difficult. I, I still say to people, you know, getting to space is very, very hard. Sometimes we take it for granted because we've been doing it for so long, but every rocket launch is a huge success when it's successful, um, and we have to treat each one with extreme care and caution. And um, just remind our audiences uh, 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 about, you know, part of this sort of Artemis 1, 2 and 3, what they all entail and, and what we should expect, if not on Friday, in the weeks to come. Yes, I mean, it really is such an exciting era of space exploration because I, I was born in April of 72. Uh, and so, yes, I was uh, you know, alive in, in December 72 when Apollo 17 landed and, and humans walked on the moon, but only just. So for generations today that have not seen humans walking on the surface of the moon, this is incredibly exciting. We're all going to be able to witness this and have a permanent presence. Artemis 1 is the uncrewed test flight. And then next year, we're looking forward to Artemis 2, four crew going around the moon, a bit like Apollo 8 did, um, testing out all the life support systems and making sure that's working ahead of Artemis 3, which you'll see two crew members go down to the surface again. And as you were saying, it's, it's essentially water, even frozen, that they're, that they're looking for because that gives a, a chance at life. Well, we know there is a lot of water ice on the surface of the moon, um, and that's really exciting. It's locked up at the poles, so the South Pole is a very exciting region. And bearing in mind those Apollo missions, there were six of them that went to the surface, and the surface of the moon is about the same surface area as Africa. Um, so we really have not scratched the surface of the moon. There is so much to explore, and none of those missions went anywhere close to the South Pole. That's tricky to get to because um, the kind of launch trajectories that we're using to get to the moon make the equator of the moon an easier kind of area. So to go to the pole of the moon we have to kind of shift the orbit slightly. So that's going to be some greater complexity coming into these missions um, and that's why you know doing it today we can go to the pole, we can consider going to these interesting regions and where you have water ice then you can make liquid water, you can make rocket fuel, you can have water for drinking and you can create oxygen for breathing. So very exciting. And and as you were saying earlier, I mean, this is this is we talk about Artemis 1, 2 and 3, but this is going to be part of uh, something else now, a new generation of space exploration. Yes, so um, the, the, it includes the Gateway, which is this lunar space station that um, we're going to create from 2024. And again, the European Space Agency is very much part of that, providing two elements of it. And the UK is building components for that um, in terms of the communication system and the refueling system. And also we'll be tracking it from, from Goonhilly Earth Station. So we are very much part of this Artemis program. And then beyond that, a permanent presence on the surface of the moon as a stepping stone to Mars. Incredible. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Tim, uh, for helping us understand all of that and the complexities of it and just how uh, uncommon, uh, I suppose, uh, what has happened today. Disappointing as it is, but uh, we appreciate uh, all of your analysis there for us. Thank you.